Welcome back, Starladder fans. We've got our second and final game of the day for Starladder EU Season 10, Day 24 coverage. Fnatic versus Album Sheet. Kato guy, this is turning into a big deal. This is do or die. Fnatic are now 4-4. Four and four. Oh, no. Oh, boy. Oh, oh biscuits. They need to uh, get this win if they want to get towards <laughs> that uh, tiebreaker situation. And, yeah. well, we'll have to see. They were upset in the last matchup. Very impressive performance mm -hmm. from Cleve in the hands of uh, that stressed Legion commander. Looked pretty good. Yeah, and, and Album uh, Sheet are actually higher in the standings. They're, team si they're ranked six uh, 11 out of 16, I think. And Stress were 16 out of 16. So uh, we'll see. Fnatic, man, they need to tighten up a little bit. Tighten those bolts and they need to barrel down the hatches, dude. Yeah, and hopefully Album Sheet don't sheet the bed. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Album Sheet start things off with a first pick Lycanthrope. And this is a guy that we haven't seen all too much. But before we get into it, I just want to point out band number four from Fnatic. You knew it. You <sighs> predicted it. And you're seeing it. It's Magnus. Magnus? Heaven forbid a Magnus get on the field when Hani's on the other side. Hear ye, hear ye. We it's will just, hear no Magnus. It's interesting that he, he... Now, the first time we saw Fnatic play in 6.83, they quickly grabbed the Ten Magnus for themselves. Remaining. Yeah. So they have value in it. Yeah. And, but they're not. Five it's not valuable enough for them to actually play. They just don't want to have to go against it. <laughs> so they don't want to get it first like they did last time. They just would rather wait, ban it out, and not have to deal with it. But this time go around, they're going to have a second chance at getting a hold of that Enigma. I do have to say, though, Come With Me did bring in a fair amount of farm on this Enigma. Mm -hmm. I, I would have to question the item choice that they went with, which was a bit interesting. They went very utility build with the Crimson Guard and the pipe, you know, but no sort of mechanism, no sort of BKB, you know, so we'll see if they decide to change things up a bit. They also get a hold of Nature's Prophet on their own side, uh, and they also got the Legion Commander. Look. Look at that. All right. They're like, you know what? I'm tired of this shit. I don't want to be going against the Legion Commander. Ten I want to benefit from me. that. And we'll see where they decide to lane it up. It, you know, last game, Cleve Five did a great job with me. it, as we already talked about. Mm -hmm. And they laned the Legion Commander in the mid lane. And you know what? It fared pretty nicely. So it's maybe it's something they're going to look to hone in themselves. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see if it's a Trixie hero in the safe lane or more of a Matumba Man hero headed to the mid. Uh, they will probably have the profit in the offlane. You mentioned the Come With Me Enigma stands to reason once more. Could very well be a support Naga, but they could also put her in the mid farming, put Elsie in the safe lane. A, c a couple of options. Uh, album Sheet, though, they've already picked the, the proper hero to deal with it. The uh, last draft, you mentioned Vengeful Spirit. Uh, great against the LC, almost the exact same logic as to why Venge is great against the Bat Rider. You get stuck inside the lasso or the duel, and you swap out your friend, and that's the end of it. Duel's over, and yeah. it's, a, it's a wash. And picking LC into that's very, very risky. I mean, it was something I was expecting uh, Fnatic to grab for themselves when they saw the early pickup of LC, but now they're going to be going against it, so hopefully this doesn't blow up in their face because they're dealing with some good counter. And Look at this. The Swag Fiend going to be picked up here. The newly modeled Shadow Fiend. I've seen him picked up a couple of times, and seconds. he's had some moderate success. Uh, I know for first hand, I saw probably his most dominating performance in the hands of Team Dia First Departure. Team Miracle Bang. actually played him and really put on a strong performance, even beating out, uh, okay. what was it? It was a, t it was a Terror Blade in the hands Fanatics of, uh, Light oh, Light what's his name? Lycus? Like, oh, he plays the morph. He used to play a ton of morphling. Great Lakels. Lakels. Yes. He, a great four protect one kind of a player, and you know he couldn't <laughs> even really do it as terribly. You but know, pardon me for this aside, but the the new Shadow Fiend model it looks badass in the game, but his portrait doesn't it look a little too much like the oh really Al? I'm, I'm pairing him up here, and it's it's kind of a doppelganger in a very dark and shadowy type form. I'm seeing Ten it. I see what you're looking at right now. His yeah, it's mouth's comparable. a little too. It's got a. He's got a bit of a beak, Five I guess they, you could they say. They beaked him, and I, I don't know how I feel about about the beak. But well, more importantly, I hope they have the Arcana. I hope so too. It, it really does look cool. It's it's a badass Arcana, and I'll be excited to see it. Well, let's talk about his actual impact on this team. So mm -hmm. he is more than likely going to be the mid lane representation. So it's not going to be your standard mid lane lichen. This is just a wager. I haven't personally watched album sheet in there how their play style is, but yeah. I would wager it's going to be now a safe lane kind of farming lichen. And then, of course, the support, Vengeful Spirit, who could roam around. An offlane Puck is still the, you know, a, yeah. a, an option. Mid lane Shadow Fiend, and then they could round this out with a secondary support. Now, uh, we were talking about a bit, you know, Lycan being a first pick. Some people don't care for it anymore since the patch. Now, I still think he has a lot of value to him. Yeah, he has a bit of delay now, shape-shifting. You know, he's yeah. fast as all hell now, though. He's got, like, an increased move speed.
speed boost of 650 once he does shapeshift, but the base attack is changed. And then on the other side of things, his wolves are still very good. So it's a bit of hot and cold with Lycan now in his uh, 6.83 life. Yeah. I, I'll have to wait and see. We haven't seen him utilized a whole lot. So exactly. it, it's up to these teams to really decide how valuable Lycan still is. Yeah, that's the big thing. We haven't really seen him in practice yet. I've still seen him banned out a couple of times. No team has really tried to run him. Hani was a big naysayer in our patch analysis. He said, I, I, and him, uh, Koikba, and Misery all kind of agreed that eh, just on paper, Lycan seems pretty dumpy now. Uh, you mentioned the Wolves. They still can chase down supports. He can still rat uh, in side lanes very effectively, but now he just doesn't have that escape mechanism. That was the thing before about shapeshift. You could just pop it. You're at max movement mm -hmm. speed, and you know you need someone like a clockwork with the cogs or a, a, a fissure from the Earthshaker to kind of lock him in place. Now, if he's just standing there casting and he takes a stun, that kind of limits some of that, uh, that getaway power, but here we go. Final picks come out. Fnatic pick up the Bane Elemental. That'll be your boogie hero. And Dazzle, the Shadow Priest, picked up by Big Num. Don't get to see Dazzle a whole lot often. I'm sure you're happy about that, I'm right? I'm always happy to see a Dazzle. And he, he got a very minor buff. His Aghanim's upgrade now is uh, just a bit better. It, yeah, it no ticks really a little faster. Anyways, but so eh, it's 50-50. Some, as I know Zai, I've seen Zai uh, kind of rush it as kind of a core item. Uh, you know what? It comes though? out sometimes. It could work in this team. I mean, it's... This is a lot of minus armor synergy they got working mm -hmm. here. You got the aura from your Shadow Fiend, the Weave of Dazzle, and, of course, Vengeful Spirit with that wave of uh, terror. So a fair yep. amount of minus armor. They are on the dire side. so A lot of Roche potential. A yeah. lot of Roche potential. That's what I'm talking about. For Fnatic, though, they see the Lycan, and they need to lock him down. Dinosaur they already have the benefit of Naga Siren and Snare. Even goes through BKB. And you know what else goes through BKB? Five that Fiend's remaining. grip on the Bane. Works very nicely to be able to lock down that Lycan, who could get caught out very easily. Yeah. Now, I, I worry that Fnatic will be stuck in sort of a similar conundrum they had last game where uh, they've got this Enigma, big black holes are always a possibility, but where's the damage coming from to dump into it? It looks like that'll be answered uh, by Matumba Man here, who will take point on the Naga Siren. Yeah. So, farming Naga, I guess, is what this means. Um, yes. It would be, you know, now they have to make sure they create the spate necessary for her to get to that point, and you know what, and for... Uh, um, the Dire side, they need to add a lot more pressure now. They can't afford to go into too far in the late game. I would imagine that Naga can still hold her own, even going against a Lycan or a Shadow Fiend. If she does get a hold of that Precious Radiance, you know, looks to build up, get a little more meat on the bones, and she'll be able to contest any sort of late game. But if uh, they do manage to move around and add pressure on her, he sh she might not be able to get to that point. Yeah, we've seen a lot more Nagas going for that kind of fighting build, early Aquila into a drums on brown boots before looking to towards the Radiant, so you can have a little bit more of an impact and uh, play a, a little bit less risky. But we'll see how this works out for Fnatic. They need this one, and we'll introduce some rosters at that. It will be Trixie in the off lane here on the Radiant side on the Nature's Prophet. Uh, in the mid, it looks like it will be Hani playing on the Legion Commander. That puts Come With Me on the Enigma once more. We'll deny in the off lane before heading to the jungle. Boogie on the Bane Elemental, and that's Matumba Man. He'll be soul, or is safe lane farming here the uh, on begins. the Naga Siren. So they're even switching up their roles a little bit as Boogie, oh man, he puts no fear into the Nightmare, and he grabs himself the first Bounty Rune. This guy, he's just the master of the Bounty Runes. He was picking them up left and right on Rubik in the last one. Yeah, he just, he, that's good though. You want to be able to babysit, you want to be able to control the Rune situation, especially considering there's going to be two of them at all times, and you want to be able to have that in your power. So, for the side of Dyer, we got Album Sheet, a team I have yet to witness play, and I'm really excited about this one. Unfortunately, though, their Star Ladder run, they're sporting a 4-8 and eight record, so they are out of contention for making it to Kiev, but they're looking to put on a strong performance here. In your top lane, we do have Ink Vi Visitor? Ink Visitor, yeah. Ink Visitor, but with a Z, you're going to be playing your Lycan. It's Aloha Dance playing your Vengeful Spirit. Along the mid lane, we got Big Num playing your Dazzle. We got Reebok it's playing <laughs> your... Uh, what, did I say it wrong? <laughs> no, it's Show Me. Reebok. I don't know why he tags up his Reebok. We've been joking that he's... There are many oh, a joke a made that he, you know, right. he jukes, <laughs> puts on his, his Reebok, you know, but oh, okay. uh, no, it's Show Me on the Shadow Fiend. All right, fair enough. Fine. Show Me playing your Shadow Fiend. That leaves the bottom lane puck going to be played by... No fear. Is that another sponsor? Yeah. <laughs> no, f no fear. No, it's uh, no fear. The, the Reebok one is uh, we we always just shrug at that. But uh, yeah, show me. I still want to know what album sheet means. It's a weird name for a team, and I, I it's got to be an inside joke of sorts. Like the the Gerd sure squad it's not like of, the, a, of Eastern sure it's Europe. Not like a, a sponsor of some sort, maybe. Al album that sheet. Uh, not that I'm aware of, but uh, you know, it could be. It very well, uh, very well could be. We won't uh, breathe. We won't, we won't look too deep into that one, I guess. Yeah. As, uh, 
For now, though, they're looking to try to control the early laning phase. They're going to be rolling with the 2-1-2 here. Bottom, they're looking to add some extra pressure uh, on this Naga Siren. Bane is going to be uh, filling that babysitter kind of a role, pulling out the nightmare if things get too hot and heavy too early here, and just trying to get some levels himself. You know, can never really count out as well. The Brain Sap, hefty, hefty damage early in the game, and Puck being so flimsy. Try not to, you know, overstep your boundaries mm -hmm. and get caught out. Yeah, No Fear's off to a pretty good start. Really, both the offlaners are, are doing well. Puck soon to find his level 3, and Trixie already into level 3, and finding some decent last hits against Ink Visitor. Rune Control going the way of the Dire. Bounty Rune picked up by the Dazzler, and headed up top. Aloha Dance finds an Illusion Rune, will smoke up, and he's got Wave and Magic Missile at the ready. Trixie may find himself in a bit of a sticky wicket, but he will TP out before the Venge can get there, and he will survive. Your soul ring gonna be picked up now by Come With Me, and you know it just—it just makes me laugh. So Hani not gonna be playing the off lane. He's mid lane LC, just like we win against last game. Mm -hmm. and it's like, you know what? I like that. Yeah. I like what <laughs> I saw. I want to do that. So he's like, I'm gonna get LC, and I'm gonna play it in the mid lane. I'm gonna take the reins here. But unfortunately for him, uh, he's seven and one against uh, uh, Chomi's eighteen and two now. So yeesh, yeah. having a bit of a rough time early on, and. Hopefully looking to bounce back. That might be a little more pressure here. Maybe on Bane to try to rotate it out, but not the best, like, roaming early uh, support. So we'll see. Yeah, up top, Aloha Dance and Trixio kind of go blow for blow, and it is Trixio that come out on the, the better side of the exchange, getting Body a few blocks. more auto attacks in. And, yeah, using these little M&M babies to block him in to really commence the right clicks. Just brown boots, but another sprout flies through. Lycan comes over. Ink Visitor salves up, ready to fight, but... Uh, won't be able to find much except for uh, these treants here. Now, Shadow Fiend did get a little buff in the last patch, and Necromastery now a little bit more of a value point early on. Now, you can hold more souls in the early levels, so it mm -hmm. uh, does let you grab a uh, Shadow Rays maybe a little bit earlier than you otherwise would have, and you have you can have few reservations about putting some more priority in uh, your burst abilities. So, uh, good stuff for the Shadow Fiend, and he's off to a hell of a start. The CS difference is just continuing to climb. Yeah, it's rough, and without that rotations coming in, it's going to continue to be a small bit of a struggle here. But, you know, come with me again for the second game straight. He should be able to have free reign in his jungle. It wasn't like there was early movement coming out from Album Sheet to really, you know, ward down the jungle and really prevent a lot of the early creep aggro. So he's making a go right now. He has mud golems over here, which I'm sure he's not too happy about, but he's making him do with the tomato. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he'll be able to grab some extra Eidolons here, he'll clear up the trees, and then can take out those fudgy mud golems without uh, too much issue. The big thing for Fnatic going well is Matumba Man. He's farming up a storm in this safe lane. Uh, just on the poor man's shield bottle right now, but keeping up in CS with the safe lane farmer of Album Sheet. Uh, who is the lycanthrope here. Ink Visitor also getting a decent amount of farm. I reckon he'll still do a pretty similar build as we've seen before in the past. Uh, Vladimir's offering early medallion and mm -hmm. uh, look for a relatively early road. He might not even need to go medallion. You could leave that for Vengeful Spirit if you have to. That or, does or the Dazzle. You know, he's, uh, yeah, he, Dazzle he, too. He likes the medallion. He's all about that minus armor with his physical damage. It's very Dyer's much true. So we'll see. It's a wager, but who wants to really take the reins on getting a hold of that? But regardless, I would imagine a uh, Roche in the near future. Maybe look at around the 10 to 15 minute mark if they do get some relative farm to back it up. Yep. Uh, Vengeful suicide into the neutrals here and uh, I, I want to say that that was intentional. I actually didn't catch it but <laughs> yeah, uh, it was intentional. hanging on to some unreliable gold so I would have expected her to maybe pick up an another TP or something before she went down but um, yeah not quite your first blood but first death of the game be on the dire side. No fear getting a little more aggressive down in the bottom lane. A big disparity in the offlaners now as he's halfway through level 4 but he's found 16 last hits. And that's almost more than an offlane puck will hope for. No, oh, he's having a really great good time in the offlane. Yeah. yeah, he's having a fantastic time here in the offlane. Rotations. Off this is good. Uh, I wasn't expecting a whole lot of early aggression in this game. It seemed like both sides were going to look to go for a you know, bit of a stalemate to start it out. The Venture Spirit of all heroes in this game is the one to rotate around and find something. So she's hiding in the dark here, all smoked up, blazing it here, and you know, pushes forward, looking for that Bane. And, oh, unfortunately, those Naga Illusions are going to prevent him from getting too far forward. Yep, that'll be the end of that little skirmish. Rotation towards the mid lane as Enigma moves in to pressure back Shomi and trying to just help out this LC. The gap continues to grow, and this is what happens when the Shadow Fiend starts to get control of the lane earlier on. Uh, it just gets so much harder to recover as down bottom, a Tumba Man finds the bounty rune, fills up his bottle, will take a stun, and uh, he'll be just fine. All that huge base armor on the Naga, keeping her safe, but 43 and 10 on the Shadow Fiend compared to the 17 and 1 on Hani's LC. That alone is just. This is this is bad news for Fnatic on that front. Yeah, and we'll see what Chomi likes to invest in early on. He could go for the early survivability, get a hold of a BKB sooner rather than later, or uh, 
but like I said, I mean, BKB is, you know, fantastic guy. I'm normally on Shadow Fiend, but against this kind of a team, you know, it's not going to work against Black Hole. It's not going to work against the Snare. It's not going to work against the, you know, Fiend's Grip. So we'll see if that's going to be enough for him to wager picking up something else instead. Mm-hmm. Yeah, now, it's not all bad for Fanatic, though. With an Enigma dedicated in the jungle, oh, you kind of expect lane. the lanes to be uh, a little bit more rough. Yeah, we'll see Trixie get jumped on, and they'll be able to cut through that tree. First Blood's drawn, and a low hot dance on the Vengeful Spirit will grab it. That Quelling Blade coming in handy, but Hani with the Haste Rune rotates up. He'll oh. hit the duel on the Ink Visitor. There's your first bout of extra damage, as we've got a winner. And he will scoot back to safety as Aloha Dance connects with a magic missile. Plenty of time left on that Haste Rune will ensure Hani's survival. So even though they get the first blood, Still a pretty good trade for Fnatic. Yeah, and they get the early bonus of damage there for Hani. So, uh, you know, convenient haste room allows him to muscle himself all the way up there and get that perk. But that leaves Shadow Fiend to continue to be left to his own devices as far as getting an insane amount of CS for himself, pushing at 56, 57, liking the right there at 41. But, yeah, he's going to go with the uh, early additional farm. Yeah, kind of an Arteezy style of build. That Shadow Fiend mid just rushing the uh, hand of Midas, and now his farm will really accelerate. Number one on net worth already by a pretty decent margin, about 800 up on the leading farmer of uh, Fnatic. And now this is just a huge farming investment uh, that he's picking up earlier than anyone else. Also, Dazzle stacking up for him here. Unfortunately, this stack... Okay, will happen. I thought, uh, thought Shadow Fiend came in and blocked it, but uh, we'll use the Midas, and now he's got a nice triple stack he'll be able to clean up, so Very show nice. me just... Getting a, a huge chunk of farm here as he clears it up, and now he's about 1,200 up on the leading farmer of Fnatic. That's a props to the supports being able to constantly move around and aid in getting these stacks happening here for this Shadow Fiend. Typically, Shadow Fiends much more prefer being on the Radiant side because you have such quick access to those side neutral camps, but having something like that definitely benefits him, and well, he doesn't seem to be having too much trouble being on this dire side as he continues to just inherit some sweet, sweet farm. Mm-hmm. And I think Visitor still doing okay in the top lane. Looks like he'll have a Vlad's coming out on the Courier. Yeah, there's your Basilius and Recipe on the way. Uh, now, for Album Sheet, I feel like they're going to peak just a little bit earlier than Fnatic. Right around that time that Matumpa Man ends up getting the uh, the Relic, maybe right as he finds the Radiance. That's when Shadow Fiend's going to hit one of his first peaks, and that first bout of farm is really going to kick in. And I think that's when Album Sheet have to do a lot of damage. But they don't have a huge amount of pushing power outside of the Lycan. And that's where things could get a little bit tricky. All Fnatic will have to do is kind of turtle up, minimize their losses, and... Just push this past the 30 minute mark when that Naga can get insane and just find huge amounts of farm with the Radiance. One really nice thing though, I don't know if it was mentioned yet, come with me, the Enigma in the jungle over here. He's been having, like I said, the time of his life getting what he wants. He's Whoa. got a Midas. So really Whoa. being able to flex his jungle muscles right now, bringing that in. And Well, last time he went ultra, ultra utility, so I'm curious if this go around, now that they don't have the Viper on their team, he should be the mech holder, I would imagine, yes. and should be able to get that swiftly. Yeah, certainly so. Midas on the Enigma. I'm trying to think if there's any time that uh, I've seen this in, in recent games and nothing is, is really coming to memory here, Cobble Guy. And sure, he'll be able to get a decently timed mech, but part of the mech timing on Enigma is having it around that 10 minute mark. So you can move into the lane, start pressuring the towers, and already this Midas has delayed the mech enough that it's it's kind of a big difference. Uh, we'll see No Fear caught inside of the first Fiend's grip of the game. Trixie will come in and snipe the last hit. They'll pick up a bounty rune to boot, and Fnatic will further their lead here, now making it 3-1. to one. Yeah, Good stuff. I mean, being able to get these early pickoffs is going to be very crucial Radiant for him because as far as lanes go, it's, it's a bit rougher for him. So Radiant getting these pickoffs is that much five. sweeter. Top, they pull out that early fortification, leaving the extra aggression coming in on this top lane. Lycan does have that Vlaz complete now, and and I would imagine building for next maybe into, um, well, I mean, we don't know where the medallion's going to go. But could get power treads instead if he's not going to get that medallion. But, you know, yeah. a Roche could be on the agenda sooner than we expect. Yeah, I think Lycan will still just go kind of uh, Rat Dota style. I think a Necro Dyer's book is still a pretty safe assumption in terms of item build. Mm -hmm. um, that was part of him that wasn't nerfed in terms Radiant's of his ability just to pressure a side lane and, and destroy stuff with Hal, uh, which he is not prioritizing here. You'll see some Lycans put a few extra points in it, some go for the value point early on, and that's exactly what he's done. He's maxed out his Radiant's wolves and gone for a mass hara mass maximum harassing and uh, last hit ability in lane as he starts to chip away at the tier one tower in the top and meanwhile on the bottom lane 
Naga has moved into that tower and done a pretty <laughs> decent amount of damage. And Naga, you know, 1,600 gold. I don't know if this is enough to assume she's going to be saving for immediately sacred relic or still going to go for a drums. Yeah, it's a good question, and it's hard to say. I think normally the drum is a little bit more standard and the way Naga's been going, but Matumpa's man, man has had a lot of space. An album sheet seemed pretty focused around getting their items up, making space for the Shadow Fiend. So I feel like of all the games to kind of rush the relic, this is one that the Naga can get away with it. And we'll see if that's going to be the case. And I, I want to jump back towards the Lycan once again. Being the first game I've personally gotten to see Lycan since the patch has been dropped, I'm actually curious to see about that casting delay on Shapeshift. I want to know mm -hmm. how significant is it going to be? Now, mind you, in the past patch, you would see something like a Lycan split pushing in a side lane, going out of tower, and then maybe people would TP in to try to defend it. But just like that, he'd be able to ult and run the hell out of there. But now there's a delay, and it's just enough delay that maybe they'd be able to catch up with him. So he might need to consider pulling back sooner than later. Yeah, and uh, looking towards a BKB, it's already a, a prioritized item on Lycan, but maybe a little bit sooner rather than later. BKB before Necro Book, so you can uh, not have to worry about uh, that getting interrupted when you have that channel time. They will move into Roche, though, and with that minus armor that we talked about, Roche will melt like butter. And that'll be an uncontested Aegis going the way of the Shadow Fiend, so Chomi has a second life now as he's uh, probably looking towards a Blink Dagger. 2200 gold could be going into a... Uh, BKB first, but uh, we'll see on that front. Mm -hmm. Speaking of Blink Daggers, that's what Come With Me will invest in first. Midas into Blink, Dyer's so no mech even under, under construction attack. right now for Fnatic. Yeah, they're, they're going to take advantage while they can to be able to maybe get a nice jump in and just go for an early team fight and just, you know, talking more about Blink Daggers. Hani's that much closer to his as well. So Blink Dagger LC, Blink Dagger Enigma, this is some good initiation coming the way towards Fnatic. Mm-hmm. Trixie uh, does have a chain mail, but looks like he'll be moving into the uh, blade mail style of build. Double null tally, blade mail. Uh, we'll see how that works out for him. He's got his phase boots. Normally you'll see power treads on this, but now he'll just get jumped on up top. Swap from Aloha Dance makes the whole thing possible. And follow up is there. No fear is the one to walk away with the kill. And even phase boots on the puck this game. I guess a little more common when you see him in the off lane, but. Um, Still just uh, n definitely not the most common boot set on the Fairy Dragon. No, certainly not. But I guess he's making it worth his while for now. And, you know, a bit of an overzealous play from there from Trixie. They should have been able Radiant's to communicate that the puck was missing or not really have eyes on much on the map Dyer's right here. And they're going to this tier one tower. And, uh, well, the middle fortification. Oh, there it is. The oh, no. The VS was not in it. So gets out the magic missile. Hani shows up and says, I'll manage to clean up. Gets a nice dual victory. The coil will be snapped as he's potentially looking to pursue. Trixie shows up back from the dead, looking to TP in. Gets a nice sprout. And, well, company's going to surround and be able to get the second kill. So even though the Enigma's black hole did fall short, they still come out on top. Two for one, and they take down the Lycan. Yep, they also keep their tower safe, which is very important to note. They'll press forward here and look for some counter pressure of their own. Maybe uh, Album Sheet will just head towards the mid. Looks like that'll be their option. And now Fnatic don't have a attack. glyph, so this tower may actually Dyer's be the one to fall, uh, ending in a one-for-one -one tower trade. Trixie will hang around in Dyer's the top lane a bit longer, but they'll come to the defense of the mid. Now Trixie faking the TP coming in. Hani around the backside, duel up in about five seconds. Will overwhelm the odds to get things started, but Boogie, he gets dropped to get things started as Chomi Dyer's just clicks him down. This Shadow Fiend's hitting like a Mack truck, cruising down the freeway with the brake lines cut, and he finds an easy kill. Naga Siren, though, Matumba Man gets a free tower kill down in the bottom lane. Up top, Ink Visitor denies that tower. Now in the mid, fight's breaking out all over the place. They want to bring down Hani, but he blinks back to safety, and now Album Sheet move into this tower. It will end up being a two-for-one tower trade, though one of the lost towers for Album Sheet was denied. A Shadow Blade. And the uh, Shadow right. Feed. I haven't seen that in quite a while. Maybe more often in pub play, but... Yeah, I definitely feel like that's a bit more of a, of a pub play pickup. I, I feel like in competitive play, more often we see these players typically go for something like your Dyer's Blink Dagger for their initiation because, you know, more just people are... Yeah, they're First more on to, like, getting a hold of dust and sentry vision, but, you know, that could be a bit unorthodox, and maybe Fnatic might not quite be ready to have those dust and sentries available, but actually, I, as I say that, I see that the Bane has two sentries on hand, but Ooh. there we go. No, they're not going to be able to get the deny, and Boogie might pay for it. Oh, Life Slap only going to be temporarily uh, of a save as he does end up falling here. Now we're even back up. Five for five. Yep. Um, 
Yeah, so that'll level things out a bit, but I worry about this Naga Sired, who's gotten a lot of space and has been able to just go straight for the Relic. We'll be looking towards uh, a Radiance Dyer's before too long here. Mm -hmm. Dire killed. Courier gets picked Dyer's off by Trixie. Look at that. They've got some great ward coverage in the jungle, and Trixie will capitalize. Dyer's no cargo, but still a nice little gold boost for Radiant Fnatic. A lot happening around the map right now as uh, Album Sheet do press forward into the Tier 2 in the top lane. Glyph is used by Fnatic as they break up the push and retreat backwards. We see a couple of big item pickups, the most notable of which the Blink Dagger on Puck and your level one Necro Book now out on the Lycan. So those core items coming around all over the place as Trixie also finds his blade mail. And look for Album Sheet here to look to come together and maybe make a fight happen. Your Aegis is getting ready to that ex expiration kind of a point and you might need to consider making Dyer's something happen. And it's gonna be a lot easier now that Puck does have that Blink Dagger and the Dream Coil ready to go. I mean, ideally, you'd like to get to level 11 by this point and get the second level in it, but they might need to just use it as is to try to make something happen here. And, mm -hmm. well, we have ward coverage coming out from the Dazzle. Who? And so, I mean, I'll, we're, we're, we have a lot of options for a medallion holder, but I don't see no medallion yet here for Album Sheet. And you know, maybe they just don't need one. With all this minus armor, they took Roche down so damn fast between the presence of the Dark Lord and the Wave of Terror that it's like, eh, just just work towards a mech. Works to work towards something different as we just simply simply don't need it that that seems to be the consensus of uh of a uh, album sheet yeah. that very well could be yeah. true here honey gets his blade mail which is another top priority pickup usually on your legion commander here as they add a little bit of extra pressure here in the mid lane and Matamaman would love to get the last hit on this tower just pulls out the illusions and well does so so pushes him well and far forward i would imagine That's at this radiance. point yeah, radiance now complete and Look at the farm begin to excel. I imagine from this Dyer's point, even adding more pressure here on the tier two album sheet. Radiance nowhere to be found here as far as defense as they add pressure here on the bottom lane. Yep, uh, the tower taking a lot of damage and most likely to fall. It certainly will, but the tier two in the mid getting Radiance shipped upon as well as Matumba Man fallen. pressing forward. The courier just about to deliver Dyer's that Radiance. So some huge damage attack. coming the way of Fnatic. They will find a decent gold and experience edge right now, even though it's tied up five to five. They've just been a little bit more efficient around the map. Sure, yep. Chomi's the number one farmer, but it's a little uh -oh. more of an even spread around the side of Fnatic. Matumba Man gets jumped on, but we'll have a Song of the Siren. It is level two, and with that, we'll just TP back to safety. That damn Naga with that damn song mm -hmm. is something that you just come to expect. It's got a really long cooldown to work with at the start, but it is just level two bottom lane. Here goes a duel going toe-to-toe, -to -toe, getting the assistance of Trixie. Can they take him down before the duel ends? They can't. So he doesn't get the bonus damage, but regardless, a nice pick off to take down the Lycanthrope. Yeah, so only plus 24 damage on Hani, but they'll be happy to quell the push and put Big Wolfie in the grave. Come with me. He'll just move into a BKB next following that Hand of Midas Blink Dagger opener. And uh, only a recipe away, about 1,000 gold off, and he'll be there with that 10-second charge. Matumba Man probably just looking for the standard movement speed items now that he can start farming. Uh, not really spreading his illusions out all too much, but it looks like he'll try to invade the dire jungle. Won't find too much in the way of farm. And uh, as Album Sheet are up there farming away, but Look Yasha, at all this ward coverage they've got. So they see all this movement in the jungle. They're pretty close, but you know what? That is part of the reason they managed to get that courier, I suppose. They Absolutely. saw it you know, flying back from dropping off that urn for Aloha Dance, and that just allowed for the easy pickoff there from Trixie. So, Dyer's you know, one hand, you want to be able to critique how close those wards are to each other, but they did inherit that uh, quick pickoff of the courier, so can't really hit on that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, certainly so. Bottom lane, Trixie, or pardon me, Hani, goes in onto Ink Visitor. There's your dual blade mail on, and this time he'll find the bonus damage. You get that winner pop up, and that'll take him to 38 plus damage, and this is when that LC snowball starts rolling, and the blade mail proving very useful there. Yeah, and that is going to be such a great tool to have just as it goes on. Dyer's I mean, Lycan you know, he may have shapeshift, he may have the move speed, but if you get caught out, then LC is going to lock you right in place and really take you apart, so... You know, I think Fnatic have definitely formulated a much better draft this go-around as opposed to last game, and it's really going to end up working out for them. And uh, bottom lane, a bounty room going to be picked up there from Hani. And uh, with a lot of space here created for Naga, as Hani continues to move around and add pressure, it's just going to be the final curtain, I would imagine, as Naga could show up with a full six-slotted set of items and just taking yeah. control of the whole base. Yeah, it's no doubt that Fnatic going to take this one late. We'll see another Hand of Midas picked up, this time on Trixie. He's gotten his core items, some huge stats on him, and some decent right-click power. He'll just go for the farming tool so that they can sit back and know turtling up will ensure them a more efficient farming game. 
Double Midas plus the Radiance Naga versus the Sigleton uh -oh. Midas as Chomi gets jumped on. Looks like we could have another winner. No, Dazzle will be there with the Grave. Go oh. around and Chomi will come out the winner. He finds a kill out of it. Oh. Trixie comes in. That will bring him down. No fear getting clicked hard by Trixie, but will be able to live as he goes puck out. And now can they turn it around on Trixie as he TP's home? Nope, no way to interrupt it. But great trade this time for Album Sheet. Dazzle in the right place at the right time. Yes. And allows the turnaround. One of those extra benefits for having a Dazzle support this game, and probably the reason they picked it up, is as long as he can get proper positioning, he'll be right there with that Grave. And he maxed out that Grave. So even at a distance, he'll be able to make sure to get that Grave off in the middle of a duel like that. And mm -hmm. if it's going to allow Shadowfiend to pick up some extra damage, which he gets 14 extra damage from that one, and he'll be happy to take whatever extra DPS he can get. Yeah, absolutely. And now the BKP will be completed on Enigma. So, Fnatic still with some stuff coming online, but steps in the right direction for Album Sheet. We'll see a little dent in the net worth and uh, net experience following that exchange. Uh, Shadow Fiend, he's hanging on to an ultimate orb right now. I wonder what that will turn into. A couple of options. Uh, Lincoln Sphere and Scotty, the two that come to mind. It could be a Manta as well. Yeah, he could have just, just invested into uh, the... Mm. Oh, no, that's a Scotty. That's two orbs he's got. Okay. Scotty Rush. This is sort of a page out of the Hani book. We've seen him do this on Shadow Fiend uh, time or two, and maybe not even the Scotty Rush, but just a, an item that he's kind of been known to pick up on this hero, for better or for worse. And an interesting choice from Chomi. Shadow let's, uh, Blade into Scotty. Let's give him a taste of his own medicine, I suppose. Yeah, you know, with that him, one. But, hit him uh, with the frost, but hmm. it's Roche time. Roche is back up. They're pinging it out right now. They know they have the advantage to be able to take it down rather quickly here on the side of Album Sheet, but they're well aware of it. Enigma saying his little purple Adelon in there to, hey, what's happening here? Oh, God damn it, and gets taken down. But they know they have the information. They have the intelligence to see that this is happening here. Let's see if they decide to move over and contest it. Enigma has a black hole ready to go with BKB. This could be a devastating fight if they and jump in. They could set it up with a song as well if they want, and I think they should consider it. Pull out the song, follow it up with a black hole, and this could be very, very nice. No, jumping in on the side wants to go for the Dazzle and get rid of him first and foremost, but no, he gets stunned. He does still get the bonus damage. Moves on the VS. Both supports going to be cleared out. There's black your hole. black hole. Catches out on the Lycan and the Puck. That's four down. Holy shit. Shadow Fiend to live. Very, he has to escape. That leaves Roche with very little life, and that is the best thing that Fnatic could have asked for. Yeah, that is that is bad news bears for Album Sheep. They lose the Roche, they lose most of their team, and Fnatic walk away without Dyer's even conceding a single death. Attack. Hani making the right call Dyer's to focus down the Dazzle. You fool me fight. once, shame on me. Fool me twice. No, it's the other way around, but you know what I'm saying. He will not allow the Graves to come out, and oh, nice deny from the Shadow Fiend, but oh boy, now they're just getting so much momentum. This top tier 2 tower will go down. Bottom tier 2 will very Dyer's well fall. Just think about this. Four Fenil trade, Roshan, and three oh, oh, oh. tier th th 2 towers. Dyer's they were trying to juke up that last gone. hit, but it is the Fnatic being able to get the, uh, tower. Look at the, the graph. tower kill. 4,000 gold lead up to 12,000 in the matter of about three minutes. Well, hey. 6.83, you never know. They can get <laughs> a, a sweet point. pick off, and uh, we fair could point. see a, a fair amount of inheritance coming the way of Album Sheet. You know, just one of those nice little perks that Ice Frog threw into the game. They did actually hot, you know, they did a bit of a hot fix. What was it, early this morning or yesterday? Uh, yesterday. So yeah. the individual takedown, the numbers have been changed just a bit, and people are feeling a little more comfortable about it. But as far as like separating amongst a group, it's still, it could be pretty dramatic if, yes. it's, a, if it's a big lead. And this is. This is a big lead, 12k net worth lead, uh, you know, so Album Sheet could still have the potential to get a good pick off and quickly pick up an extra core item. Mm -hmm. Now uh, we've got uh, some more items coming out here. The Scotty picked up by Shadow Fiend, so that's his big one. Uh, he's pretty damn tanky now, 1700 HP up on him, and uh, he hits decently hard, has all that utility, but without a BKB, we'll see how this works out for him. Hani going just straight hard hitting, now the Desolator coming out. And uh, they're not the minus armor team, but well, Hani will get some into the fray, and I think this is a, a pretty sizable item pickup here. And the Dire team actually not really that high armor. Uh, Shadow yeah. Fiend the highest at 12. So this safe to say this Desolator going to do some serious work, oh yeah, especially against like the Dazzle and the Puck. And for a team that has a lot of armor synergy and they have that weave, it's going to be pressure on him to get that weave out nice and early if they don't want to take too much damage mm -hmm. from said Desolator. But if he does blink in and catch him out, it's pretty much a guaranteed dual win. Yeah, but I think that is a definite, definitely a safe assumption. Now, Angus Siren is the one to grab the Aegis of the Immortal. Now has the Boots of Travel, so she's cruising around. A Matumba Man can farm one lane and hop over and join the party, farm in the jungle, and then come in once the fight commences. 
And where does he want to go from here? Usually that Manta style, or at least the casual Yasha, is that first uh, stop off. Mm -hmm. But could just look to tank up straight away, moving into a heart, butterfly, all pretty standard stuff. And a Tumba Man will have the luxury of well, grabbing anything he wants He's now. So rich, he can just get whatever the hell he wants. He goes yeah. for the Yasha, yep. There you go. So keeping it standard. But has dethroned Shadow Fiend as the number one farmer, and Shadow Fiend's farming well, but he's about it. Everyone else on the dire side really hurting for items now. Lycan, just Vlad's and Necro 3. 25 minutes in, you'd want your safe lane farmer to have a little bit more than that. But Puck, look at this. He'll go for the new Aghanim Scepter upgrade. Ooh, I like that. I guess we get to see it. And you know what I like is drops the coil, swaps someone out of the coil, and that's a free stun, I guess, and yeah, extra that's damage. Yeah, some nice so synergy there. That's a little, it's cute. Mm -hmm. You know, but, uh, you know, is it better than getting a Yules? Is it better than getting, uh, you know, your Sheep Stick yeah, or whatever? Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll have a good point. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, it's particularly strong against BKB. That's uh, that's the big thing. It gives the Dream Coil uh, the um, spell, spell piercing. That's what I'm looking for. Still not used to that phrase. Um, we don't have a single BKB holder outside of the Enigma. Uh, on Fnatic, so and, and maybe not the best situation for it, but will be interesting to see it um, sort of in in person for the first time here as yeah. this patch comes out and yeah. teams are still experimenting around. The other good thing is it does give Puck some nice stats. I will have that Ogre Club to go with it, so it uh, will help tank him up a little bit and make up for the lack of uh, power treads. Yeah, they don't look to make it work right here. If they do get the appropriate jump, they can take apart anyone they, they so like. and. We'll see if that's going to be the case here. It looks like Fnatic, we're trying to creep in here on this uh, bottom lane, but it is Album Sheet that have a wealth of numbers up here as they look to scout things out and move on forward. So just more separation of farm, but if it is going to be about just more of a stalemate farming session, it, I would have to favor, obviously, Fnatic with the yeah. benefit of Naga and a Nature's Profit. And you know, double Midas. Moving yeah. everywhere. It's, you know, this isn't a game you want to look to wait out because Fnatic definitely have the late game much more in their favor. Yeah, I mean, just look at, look at how much Trixie's farm has increased now. And since that Midas, he's picked up a full Mjolnir and has another 2,000 gold to boot. Uh, the Naga Siren sitting on, uh, well, not too much gold right now. She did just pick something up. A full Manta style coming out. Seems like just moments ago it was only a Yasha that she had top lane. They will grab Ink Visitor, but the Grave comes out, and Hani will not find bonus damage from this duel. Lycan still the first to go down. Song of the Siren from Matumba Man sets this up, and the Heal Bomb will, or pardon me, not be enough to keep the Dazzle alive. Off to the side, Chomi gets off the ultimate, and they bring down the Nature's Prophet and the Bane. By uh, Lycan... Like in Wolves helps secure those kills, so uh, kind of a chaotic uh -oh, play. Uh -oh, man oh, will over and uh oh, how much gold are they going to be getting from this fight now? They took down a lot. They took down the Furion. They took down Naga. There's a fight recap. I want to see this gold change. Wow, 3.7k in favor of Alvin. Wow. Look at that experience change as well. That was a big team fight, and that helps get them back in this game a little bit. We'll see the graphs kind of update here and. Wow. Uh, oh, oh, no fear. Going blow for blow with the puck. He will get off the phase shift. Should be able to survive as Hani comes in. Duel at the ready. Wants some free damage here. Will get stunned up from the Venge, but if he can duel either of them, this is free damage. Just finishes it's off the puck missed. with some overwhelming odds. Aloha Dance juking very effectively here. The dagger getting constantly oh, interrupted. In two seconds he could bleak, but it's going to be too late. Oh, man. Fancy footwork, though, from the Venge. And good stuff from Album Sheet. So they're they're on their road to recovery here, Kato Guy. Another one of those, and they'll be in great uh -oh. shape. Shomi comes in, just Hi, how you drops doing? the Enigma. And there you go, 11 to 15, just like that. Album Sheet showing us a sign of life, and Hani has a blink dagger. I don't think they've scattered him out. Maybe just assuming he TP'd home, and uh, they won't they won't be venturing around uh, to find him. That was 900, 971 gold, according to the fight recap uh, that they put up just for that swift takedown from Shadow Fiend. And I know they got a wealth of gold from before in that top lane. Puck had just completed Agnum Scepter, and he had like 2.3k in the bank. So just goes to show you like how much uh, you can really hand over if you're not too safe when you have such yeah. a significant Shadow lead. Shadow Fiend has a Dyer's Reaver now. Uh, he'll be working towards attack. probably a Satanic. Yep, there's your Helm of the Dominator coming out. So he's really tanking up here, and it looks like the general strategy from Album Sheet is... Um, just tank up, and for the most part, that makes LC's life a lot more difficult. The more our HP pool is, the better our chance of surviving the duel, and that's, end of the day, less damage we hand over. Yeah. But is this enough for Album Sheet to get back into the game? Eh, I don't know. They constantly still have to worry about Trixie looking to rat it out on the side, you know, with yeah. that Mjolnir pickup and everything, and 
He's doing a lot of significant damage elsewhere, and of course this Naga Siren is going to keep continuing to be a problem, spreading the uh, amount of farm across the map with those illusions, keeping pressure everywhere and having constant vision. They have some nice aggressive wards laid out. They constantly see where Album Sheet are moving once they get outside of their own base, so... I, definitely the ball is still in Fnatic's court in this game thus far here, but if they keep handing over these kills... Ooh, almost got caught out there from Chomi. But yeah, Chomi trying to determine what's the right course of DPS. Do I shadow raise him? Do I just click him down and just won't have enough damage as the Nature's Prophet survives? But this Naga getting pretty big now has the casual vitality booster, which will eventually evolve into a Heart of Tarrasque. Yeah, I would wager. Absolutely. Or a Crimson Guard, who knows, right? Probably yeah, I guess that's true. Nah, you never be, know. It'll be, a, it'll be a heart. You know, not <laughs> looking to save the extra money and go straight for the Reaver, but you know, regardless, still the uh, the extra bit of uh, still HP up. still works out pretty nicely for us. I so. think sure Album we. Sheet. This isn't their saving grace in terms of they're totally back in this game and it's an even matchup. But if they take another team fight like Dark that again, Knight. they will be right back in this game. And another uh, Roshan could certainly do that for him. Third Rosh will be the one that's up next. So Cheese Aegis could Dyer's go a long way. They'll use a Dream Coil attack. on the Boogie, Dyer. and it's a this dead it's bane. Not much. He can do is the Shadow Fiend will just chop him down with that eye skin. They're scouting out Roche, but they still have a, a bit of time before that's going to be back up. It's yeah, it's it's a Dyer's long clock right now, and uh, but another nice pickoff here. And it, we've been long overdue for a nice black hole setup, if I do say so myself. Uh, but Enigma is going to be preserving it for now, and it looks like he's going to be you know moving forward into getting that refresher, so we can yeah. get the double hole action. Oh, jump forward duel! They want that support dazzle, and they get it. A little bit of extra no, damage coming weakness. the way towards Hani, but they have to be cautious here. Coming in under the shadows, they want the Enigma. He pulls out. Whoa! That hole was not going to be doing too much. Right that there. was pretty short lived. Yeah, show me. He got, just he got blown us, the hell up. Showing I mean, us how look. much damage he can put out. And Woo. Meanwhile, Matumba Man trying to rat into the base, but this Shadow Fiend is Dyer's damn scary right now, Kato attack. Guy. And uh, that's also a, a BKB charge on the Enigma. That was the eight second charge, so dwindling down to that five seconds. Though he did manage Dyer's to buy the refresher recipe. So I just couldn't help but feel like he, he, he spazzed it out a bit right there. I mean, given if he managed to get a nice BKB and caught both of them, maybe Hani right there could have helped clean it up, but it just wasn't happening. He just doesn't have enough really to tank as far as that, how much damage was coming his way. So really rough stuff. And, you know, I, I'm also looking at this puck. I, I want to see the uh, the coil push. I mean, he's getting some nice coils. It's locking him in place, but, we, you know, yet to see the fun little coil swap that I'm coming to. Love. Yeah, I, I think that's a, a sm uh, an interesting bit of synergy that we don't often see, but uh, definitely an option. Also, a blink dagger is on Aloha Dance, so stands to reason he should be able to get in position for some uh, interesting swaps. But now Trixie looking towards a Scythe of Vice. Matumba Man still just farming up towards the heart, and Hani, he's uh, now got his boots of travel just hanging on to, you know, two feet, two boots, as they say. Power Treads and BOTs in the inventory, but now having... Uh, some some global presence there as he can teleport around and it's important to note that the BOTs did get a little bit of a buff and now have a shorter cooldown than uh -oh. TP scrolls. Matumba man, uh, he'll get caught inside of the uh. coil, but it's just not enough. Had Vengeful Spirit been there, could have gotten a nice swap and prevent the Naga from getting away, but wasn't quite close enough. So Naga yeah. thanking her lucky stars that that wasn't the case and does get out with the I TP. think the Radiant Spurn from the Illusions was actually uh, interrupting his Blink Dagger <laughs> so that Aloha Dance couldn't get there. So it was a nice play from Matumba Man. Otherwise, Aloha yeah, Dance course. probably would have gotten into the into position to do that. Roshan will be under assault and all that minus armor just getting cut down. And this will be Aegis and Cheese. And, you know, Alum Sheet are right back Roshan in. Even though they don't have the late game farming the tools, Fnatic, Fnatic is just losing a lot of momentum. And... These team fights are starting to look a little bit more difficult as even this Lycan's coming online with a plate mail probably moving into an assault Karas. Your recipe yes, for that refresher is in the hands of Enigma now, so only about a little over 1k away now from getting that refresher complete, and I hope that is enough ammunition for them to feel like they can go at the team and go at Album Sheet and really try to put a lid on this game because uh, the longer they wait, they're, they're continuously handing over little fights here and there, and... You don't want to be handing over so much farm and so much gold to your opponents, and they have the potential to come back here. Trixie hiding in the tree line, as is the Bane. If they get scouted out, this could be treacherous. Trixie will just TP home. Boogie does have a TP scroll, and he's just appropriately fogged, and they won't find him, but Dyer's in kind of an awkward position. Attack. Still a lot of creeps getting shoved into the Dire base, looking at their Tier 3 tower health. All of them still standing pretty strong. Matumba Man doing a good job keeping lane control in favor of Fnatic. Making a lot of space for them to farm, but 
end of the day, they need to find some good team fights. Uh, all this farm kind of mm, goes to waste is strong, but uh, oh if they can't man. win the team fights, it's uh, a little bit rough. Is uh, Boogie going to be doing anything here? He's been sitting at the top of the mountain for <laughs> quite a while, like nearly like two minutes still. Is he that nervous that someone's going to be there and doesn't want to TP? This is kind of is awkward. He, is he's he going to the bathroom? He's been here for a, a, a suspicious amount of time. I'm going to check that stream. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But <laughs> I mean, <laughs> he's, he's like really sitting here for quite a while, and he's just weighing it out. Maybe he's calling the shots. You know, who knows? But, but he's pulling you know, out we'll the see. calculator, doing some math. How much longer do they need to farm before they can take a team fight? Down bottom, come with me. Gets jumped on by Chomi, and he's just getting juice. Throws out the Malefice, and wow, 20 HP to spare. He will actually live. Skin of his teeth is Enigma teeth. I don't think Enigma has a mouth. That was probably a bad analogy, but does be able to get out of there from that one and uh, come with me. We'll be able to live on here and should be able to just acquire just a touch more farm to get that refresher complete. And as I said before, hopefully that's going to be the turning point for him. Boogie still waiting in these trees. Boogie, what are you doing? But Can you please? This is Yu-Gi-Oh style. The trap card will be activated. Just have to wait for uh, Silly Yugi to make the misplay. <laughs> I wish we had set the timer, how long he's actually... He's it's legitimately been there for like three it, minutes, three minutes, three yeah. seconds, almost it's four minutes. It's been it at the very least two minutes since I've been paying attention to it. And he's he hasn't even moved. Like, he's at... How long is it until uh Oh, bottom lane, though. Trixie, oh. immediate TP as Shadow Fiend has to sit there and just kind of swat at him. Unfortunately, he doesn't have a some sort of bash or anything to prevent him from... Uh, Naga does find the heart as well as the double damage room. But here we go. Boogie finally leaving the lane. Hanya okay. will join him. And now they will just shove up towards the top lane. Looks like Fnatic want to commence some split pushing. TPs will be coming back. And oh, after all that, comes out from the trees just to run into Dream a coil. Oh, swap! Where's the swap? Swap! Um, okay, that was just well, underutilization. Tried to go abilities. for a missile, but missile has much more of a delay than a swap does. And so. a much shorter range, yeah. Oof. Well, missed opportunity there. Kind of a whiff Dream Coil. But uh, Refresher Orb comes out for Enigma, so that's that's good stuff. Well, you know, for now, let's see. They're going to look to try to start knocking at the base door here for the side of Fnatic. As, uh, is Double Black Hole enough? Now Assault Cross on the Lycan, and the Golden Experience lead for Fnatic is completely stymied at this point. We'll see BOTs coming in. Nope, they will get canceled. He needs to make sure he gets Vengeful Spirit with this black hole. It's oh, very, very Trixie important. going on to Ink Visitor. He will manage to get off the ultimate. Now the follow-up is there. He'll take a grave, and he'll be A-OK. -okay. LC is in the top lane right now, so it is a 5v4 in the bottom. But the Rat Dota is commencing. Show me another black hole. Essentially whiffed. He gets it off for maybe half a second before he gets chopped down. And did I say Chomi? I meant to say come with me as Hani. He's on the back foot in the top lane. Now Chomi slowing him down hard with the right clicks. Trixie has the blade mail on. Can Chomi survive this? He does have the Aegis of the Immortal. So even if he goes down here, it won't be too bad for him. Hani getting some extra damage. Puck coming back in. Hani will fall. That's a streak ended going the way of Puck. And another disastrous team fight for Fnatic. Oosh. Let's look at this recap here. Oh boy, oh boy. Yep, that's a pretty significant HP change to fly over to the other side right now and a fair amount of gold. 4.6k now in the pocket of Puck right now to work with as, uh, you know, didn't even have to expend any sort of cheese and that tiffed up there on the top lane. And like you said, the black hole now on cooldown. Uh, he does have the refresher available here, but this is uh, not looking so good. Fnatic in the late game here. At one point, what were they up by? Like a 12k gold lead, 15k gold 15, lead. Yeah, They're still up by a little bit, but you know, it's looking like much more of a reality. Slowly but surely, that album sheet could slowly take this yeah. game back. I think really that right now the big the big shortcoming is these black holes. Now that he has refresher BKB, this Enigma needs to get off a double black hole. And I think if Fnatic can do that, they'll be able to take a good team fight. But again, it feels like sometimes they're just not on the same page. Like that last screen. They're fighting down here. Meanwhile, Hani's pushing the top lane, and I think split pushing is okay, but you've got two great rat heroes, your Naga and your Nature's Prophet. Mm -hmm. LC is not your split pusher, and that's where they need to be more on the same page and either commit to a fight, commit to rat Dota, but this kind of pussyfooting around, if you will, is just not not working out. Yeah, and you know they need to really enhance and go in one sort of strategy. It seems like they're kind of mixed between what the game plan is going to be, whether we try to take a team fight using two black holes or if we're going to commence some sort of split push action here. I think they really need to invest in one or the other to make something happen here. And I mean, the benefit for them is you know having this Naga, having these Radiance Illusions moving around is constantly going to keep the creeps in their favor. It, it's not looking like anytime soon that Album Sheet are going to even get them past the river. So it's a wealth of farm available on the map for 
fanatic side, but you know, with these pickoffs that keep uh, pickoffs rather that keep on happening, it's uh, you know a matter of time before Al Mashi be able to feel more comfortable. The death timers will start building up that when they do take him down and they don't have a buyback, they'll be able to push on forward and maybe try to make a break at the base. Mm -hmm. Now, show me. Uh, will complete his MKB, just sh uh, Shadow Blades forward onto Trixie, scouts it out a little bit. Will cancel the ultimate before he gets it off, but now come with me on the other side of the tree line. Black hole in 25 seconds. Hex used onto Chomi, but now he'll commence the right clicks onto Trixie. He doesn't have a blade mail any longer. Enigma will come in with a stun, and that will buy Trixie some time. Blink over the tree line, and Trixie will survive. A bit of a close call. Meanwhile, on the other side, we'll Miss LC getting picked off by Puck, but now Fight will break out up top. Enigma tries to walk in, just gets Clicked down by Chomi once more. Matumba Man is in the fray. Has an ultimate ready. Trixie coming back in. Big Num gets off the grave before he falls. There's your Requiem of Souls from Chomi. And just trying to find the right angle to start commencing the right. Ooh, hands off the cheese to Dazzle and uses it right away. And now they're looking to turn back. But Trixie going right back into the fray. And Chomi going toe to toe trying to hold strong. But no. They lose the Dazzle. Trixie, Trixie, no. Gets in the bursted down. The song is just a little too late to save his ally. And they have to pull back. Oh no, three down all day for the side of Fnatic and only losing the Dazzle. Yeah, and now Lycan, he's doing a little bit of split push. He's headed to the mid lane. There's a Glyph standing. We'll use the ultimate, uh, doing some decent damage to this tier two tower. And Matumba Man will kind of go blow for blow with him and we'll keep the tower standing, though a lot of damage comes out onto it. Passing the cheese to the Dazzle, such a smart play from the Shadow Fiend. He's got the uh, Satanic, so he was able just to life steal up and have kind of a cheese of his own, commencing all those right clicks. Looking at the graph, it's beginning to creep towards the Ooh. even mark and the XP. Album should actually have experience lead oh, now. Oh, man. Oh, wow. E-Blade out on Aloha Dance. All these items coming the way of the Dire, and Hani's just kind of fallen off now on this LC. We missed the kill down in the bottom lane as we were watching up top, but uh, he's now looking towards an Assault Karas, maybe a Mjolnir, but has the Hyperstone. He hits pretty hard, but his survivability is limited. I think a Black King Bar may be a requirement for him coming up pretty soon. Yeah, and you want to say that, but that's not going to matter against the swap. That's not going to matter against that coil with Agnum Scepter. So, yeah. you know, it becomes tricky. So it's apparent he needs that survivability, and he feels Assault Curios might be the best bet. That will also add utility to taking those towers, pushing in, and just adding a whole lot of survivability to not himself, but the whole team. Mm -hmm. Maybe damage. Enigma should even consider uh, picking up a Ghost Scepter at this point. I mean, he runs into Black Hole, and Shadow Fiend just click, 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 click. You've got a dead yeah. blueberry. Oh, and speaking of which, look oh. at this. Click, click. Click. Of the oh, he gets it off ball. this time. Oh, thank goodness. But do they have the damage to bring him down? Refresher. He pulls it out early, but they managed to finally bring down the big black one. And, well, Hani gets coiled up, but, oh, there he, what? Oh, oh, uh-oh. Ah, okay, he comes back right to the hole. Come with me. Ends up falling and ends up being a trade, but still three for one all day. Finally advantage for Fat Fnatic. It seemed like the first fight in quite some time that they're able to get something going in their favor. This yeah. forces a buyback to come out from the Shadow Fiend as their bottom base begins to become very, very threatened. Trixie, the head commander of getting pushed into the base right now. There's your Song of the Siren, going to be pulled out by Matumba Man oh, so to smart. lock him in pace. All in place. Now the top lane in trouble. The tower goes down. Lycan will get the deny, but what a buyback from Trixie. Now the rat pushing is a big problem, but Naga Siren gets left behind. No Song to make the retreat and they will chase her down. Aloha Dance has already used the swap. We'll have a blink dagger up if he can get in range, but the Radiance Burn interrupting him. Show me won't be able to stop Matumba Man from TPing out Boogie. Oh, good well, luck, he'll Bane. be crit down, but <laughs> yeesh. Oh. Okay, so that will be two tier three towers killed and the last one very low. Uh, one buyback was used on each side. Uh, no, two buybacks on the die. Pardon me, Puck also bought back for that. So album sheet do definitely have to pay more than Fnatic for that, but now they will secure Roshan, and that helps uh, split the difference a bit. I mean, that just goes to show that, you know, Fnatic, if they do manage to get the upper hand in some of these fights, uh, album sheet are going to lose their base really quickly. L you know, luckily they had some of the buybacks available that are really contest the push that was coming their way, but the next go around, if they lose a fight, they could lose a set of racks very, very quickly. Maybe two, maybe three. Who even knows? Adam Sheet will press forward now. They know the black hole and the refresher on cooldown for another 90 seconds. This is a huge window of opportunity. The problem is just dealing with the rat dota. Trixie in the bottom lane. He's pressing forward. He'll try to do some damage here. Hani has BOTs up. He'll move into the top lane. Radiant's and there is no glyph for album sheet. So they need to be very cautious about how they approach this. They'll get the tier two tower. Radiant signs still have a glyph standing. Bottom tier three tower goes down. Trixie uh -oh. going to work on the barracks. 
Top Barretts will start to take some damage, but Album Sheet, they look like they're almost all in here. They're going to go straight for the high ground. Glyph comes in. They've already lost their top lane to Barracks. Bottom lane taking a lot of damage. They want to win the game right here. Song of the Siren flies through. That stops them. Oh, no, pardon me there. Never mind. Pardon me. Song of the Siren still available. Tier 3 tower in the mid goes down. They'll have that benefit, and look at Fiend's Grip. From Bane, we don't get to see a whole lot from him. Actually, locks him in place, and well, this song's gonna delay them a bit as they're going for the Megas on the other side of things. It's Honey and Trixie hand in hand to take down the last set of racks, and there it is. Die all back racks from the Bane. Up. They're going all in. We've got a good old-fashioned base race on our hands as Album Sheet. They'll go straight for the tier fours. Trixie coming in, isolates no fear. Chomi has an Aegis of the Immortal. He'll go down, but he's coming right back up. Both tier four towers have fallen. Can Album Sheet do it? All of Fnatic have come back on the defensive. They have to make the hold here. There's the duel from Honey on to Show me that secures the kill, and it looks like Fnatic will hold. Lycan will buy back, but Mega Creeps have come out on the side yep. of uh, Fnatic, and looks like this is going in the Radiance's favor. Is now all they have to do is hold on. Yep, and uh, unfortunately, Lycan does buy back, but he comes back to a house that's been ravaged. <laughs> <laughs> Where is everything? The kitchen's destroyed. The living room's upside down. It's it's all gone. We have nothing left, folks. The Megas are now swarming into our base. And I would imagine at this point, Fnatic do hold control. We got another over a minute before even Shadow Fiend's going to be available to come back into this one. And it's clear that he's been the dark horse for them this game to try to bring it back, being the true damage dealer. You know, Lycan, being a Lycan, it, it's been so, it's been relatively well, but not as good as we've seen in, you know, past patch and typically what you'd like out of your Lycan throw. But for Fnatic, it's his time. They break the base, they're looking to move on in. And they gave a bit of a, you know, Advantage here for Almashid to try to come back into this game, but I feel like this is going to be it for him. There's your black, black hole. hole. Mm -hmm. The swap onto the Lycan keeps him alive. Aloha Dance will go down as he gets sucked towards the middle of the nether. Uh, Ink Visitor coming in. There's your second black hole. It's been refreshed. We'll isolate the Lycan, and this will be GG. Big Num, the lone survivor. Not much a Dazzle can do. He'll GG out, and Fnatic will take the win, but... That was uh, kind of a nail biter till the bitter end coddle guy for a moment there. It looks like Album Sheet might be able to win that base race. Yeah, you would have figured that uh, Fnatic would have had a much easier time given the advantage they had early into the mid game, but uh, you know they were giving Album Sheet a, a, a bit of a moment there to to come back in and give Fnatic a run for their money. But Woo. ultimately, in the end, that uh, all in play in the mid lane just wasn't enough. Yeah, uh, certainly not. And that's where Song of the Siren really comes in handy in that late game. Just using it as a delay tactic, that bought them a good five, six seconds. Just stopped dead in their tracks. Also prevented them from TPing back to defend the base if they were so inclined. So that secured the Mega Creeps for Fnatic and delayed them long enough for their Ratters to come back. And, I mean, that throne was, was taking some damage. I think another five seconds of right clicks on the throne uh, it would have been really, really close. Yeah, well, it would have been, but unfortunately... Woulda, shoulda, coulda is not going to be enough. And unfortunately for Almashid, they will go down. Fnatic do get their win, so it's possible they could still be in the run for maybe some tiebreakers. That now makes them 5-4. and four. So uh, they still have a lot of games to go. They've only played 9, and they still have some rough opponents coming up. So they're still technically in the running, but I will say it's looking pretty grim. Uh, if Album Sheet, the 11th place team, is giving them a run for their money like this, Going up against the big daddies, your Cloud Nines, your mm -hmm. your Navi's, your Team Secrets. Um, I don't know. Looking a little bit dark for Fnatic this season to make it to the land finals. Yeah, but we'll see. We have a, a couple days left for the European division to see what team will be able to come out and hopefully secure some spots to make the trip to Kiev and Star Ladder. But overall, still a lot of exciting games. Well worth a ticket. Yeah, definitely. So we'll have another day of Starlighter EU coming up tomorrow, guys. Then we'll have our two-day break. And after that, it's the it's the home stretch. Uh, the other se uh, sections of Starlighter have wrapped up. SCA now caught in a three-way tiebreaker mm -hmm. for the end. Uh, Kadoga was covering some of that last night. And it's now Johnny's Revenge, Titan, and uh, IAP, Execration. That's correct. So uh, that, that'll be an interesting little group stage there for uh, the tiebreaker to see which team, only one, will move to the land finals. Then we'll have the four from EU uh, coming up uh, next week. So... We're done for today, though, buddy. At Cattle Guy on Twitter, at Zayori TV, and remember, at Beyond the Summit to stay up to date with all things at the studio. We're out for today. We'll Thank see you very you all much. Tomorrow. Bye bye. <laughs>